So if we look at how the separate function works, by default it separates on any non-alphanumeric character, which is why here we didn't really specify what the separation character is. Uh, it just saw that slash is the non-alphanumeric character that appears and it, and it did the separation automatically there. So I, this is by default. Uh, but of course, if you want, you can specify the separator character explicitly, like I've shown here. So we have said table 3 pipe separate rate into C classes population, the separator equals forward slash. Okay. Uh, of course, we didn't need to do it in this particular case because it would have found that automatically. But there would be some situations where we are separating a column that has several non-alphanumeric characters and we want to separate them on one particular one, then we can specify it like this. Another very important point to notice, in case you missed it, is suppose we did the separation like this. It doesn't matter whether we use the separation character or not. If you did the separation, then the resulting columns are always character columns, right? Because after all, it's treating the input as a character string and it's separating it into two parts. So the resulting character, the columns are character columns. If we want, we'll have to change them later explicitly. The system doesn't uh, give us any surprises by doing automatic conversions. Of course, as you can imagine, there is a way for it to, to make it convert as well. So all you have to do is to include the convert equals true flag when you are calling the separate function and then it will do the job. So here if you did this, then you see that the resulting two columns, cases and population are integers. Okay, So this is just another convenience that you have. So we see another option here to separate. We can separate at a particular position. So the table 3, it has a column called year, which is like 1995, 2000 and so on. Let's say we want to separate out the century portion and the actual year portion into, for example, 19 as the century and 95 as the year. So we can do that by specifying not a separator character, but a position at which to perform the separation. So position meaning after the second position, perform this po uh, separation. So if you did that, you get this result. Okay, so you got the two new columns, century and year, uh, which is nice. Uh, but be a little careful. Notice the uh, type of these two characters, these two columns. They have become characters, right? Because even though the input was numeric and it performed the separation, uh, we, we uh, after the separation, it converts things back into characters. Of course, there is a way to avoid that. We can say convert equals true, and then sure enough things work out well for us. The converted uh, value is now both of, both of them are integers. Of course, because they are integers, 0, 0 has become just 0, which is fine, uh, which is as... Okay, so now we've got this uh, convert option working. Of course, once there is an option to separate, obviously you can imagine there is also an option to unite. So let's do this example once again. Table, uh, we'll separate table 3 into century and year. Uh, but we'll store the result in another table, table 5. So we're saying separate year into century year, separator, uh, uh, separate at the second position, after the second position. Uh, but this time we're not, uh, we're, not, we're not asking it to convert. Okay, so let's see the, the result. Uh, so if you did that, you will get back uh, the century and the year in two separate columns, both as characters. Uh, so now we are going to unite from table 5, which is the one that, that we created earlier. We are going to unite the two columns, century and year, into a new column called new. So the result then would be like this. So we see the new column, okay, except that if you look at it, you notice that the column is still a character column, which is fine, uh, but you also see that there is a separator that's been added. So by default, unite adds underscore as a separator. So if you don't want that, of course, we can take action by saying, uh, separator is the empty string. If you do this, you get the result like this. So now there is no separator, but of course the character column is still of the character type. So sep so unite along with separator equals the empty string can do this kind of thing for us. So one thing we notice that when we perform these operations like separate and unite, we are still getting some uh, character columns. You know, the, the resulting columns are character columns. What if we want to convert them into numbers? We can do that. So we can say this, for example, table 5, unite century and year into one column with the separator of empty string. So that works fine. So if you do that, 
uh, you'll get the uh, new column will be a character type column. We can convert it with you using these kinds of functions. So for example, table six, dollar new, which is this new column we created, which is a character column. We are saying replace it with as dot integer table six dollar new. So if you do that, you'll get this as a result. Notice that the uh, uniting has taken place as well as the column is now an integer column. Let's now revisit missing values. So with missing values, for example, we can create a table, uh, for example, here. So we are creating uh, information about stocks. So we've got the years 2015 and 2016. For each year, we've got the quarters, one, two, three, four, and we've got the stock returns for each of those quarters. Of course, in our data, we find that the data, the return for the fourth quarter of 2015 has been explicitly marked as missing. So that is an explicit missing. It's a presence of an absence, right? That an NA indicates that there is an absence and uh, the presence of that absence is highlighted here. However, there is another implicitly missing value which is not obvious if we just directly look at it. But if you look carefully, you will realize that quarter one of 2016 is actually not there at all. Okay, It's missing in the sense of our understanding of the data, but it's not missing in so far as R is concerned, right? because there is no NA to show that it's missing. So in this sense, this is implicitly missing, or uh, the way Hadley Wickham puts it, explicitly missing is presence of an absence, and implicitly missing is absence of a presence. Just a nice cute way of putting it. So this implicitly missing value can sometimes be made explicit by doing the following. So if you took that old uh, table that we created, stocks, and then we uh, spread the data for the years into the year column and then uh, made split up the split it up into multiple columns. In other words, we'd have one column for 2015, another column for 2016, and both of those columns would have the appropriate return values. Of course, the data will not be in tidy form, but we're just uh, using spread to make the implicitly missing value somewhat explicit. So if you did this, the result is going to be like this. So the, the year column, as we expected, has got split into 2015 and 16. Of course, since the column name is numeric, uh, R has automatically put in back ticks to, uh, to the column names. Uh, but now you see here that uh, 2015 quarter four was NA. That was our explicit uh, one, explicitly missing one. But now, uh, since 2015 has quarters one, uh, one to four, 2016 is also forced to have quarters one to four. But the value for quarter one of 2016 was not there in the original data. That was our implicitly missing value. Uh, it has now got revealed as a result of this process. Continuing the same example further. So now suppose we did this. We got the stocks, which we already know what they are, uh, which is the, uh, the table with uh, an explicit missing value for the fourth quarter of 2015 and an implicit missing value for the first quarter of 2016. And then we spread it out as we saw earlier, in which case we now have two missing values. Uh, the fourth quarter of 2015 and the first quarter of 2016 are both missing. And uh, uh, you know, after this spread, our data is going to look like, like this here, which is what we saw earlier. So now what we are going to do is to we are going to gather back 2015 and 16 into one column. Right? If you did that, you would now end up with two NAs. But what we are trying to do is to uh, perform that gathering back and omit the NAs along with the process. Right? So we now say gather year okay, and return both of them and uh, to 2015 to 2016 and NA.RM equals true. Okay? So this is what we are doing here. and The result is going to be like this. So we are going to get new columns here and return and 2015 and 2016 are both here. Uh, the returns are all here except that because we said na.rm equals true, uh, the, NA, the, the things with uh, NAs for returns have completely been removed from this. Okay, So 2015 quarter 4, 2016 quarter 1 are both gone because the returns for them were NA. Sometimes when we have missing values, we've got implicit and explicit missing values. 
Suppose we want to make all the missing values explicit. Earlier, the approach we saw was to uh, first uh, separate it out and then gather it back and then get the missing values in place and so on. You don't really have to go through all of that process. You can do it very simply by using the complete function. Okay. So in this example, let's take the stocks example. As you already know, that has uh, one explicitly missing value and one implicitly missing value. So we can simply say complete year quarter. So that is what the system is going to do is it's going to, going to take every possible value of year, every possible value of quarter and make sure that the resulting data has a row for every unique combination of year and quarter. Right? So the unique years are 2015 and 16. The unique quarters are 1, 2, 3, 4. But in our original data, which is stocks, 2016 quarter 1 is completely missing. Right? 2015 quarter 4 is not missing. The combination exists uh, and uh, the return for that is marked as NA. So in the sense of being complete, that's not a problem. But the fact that 2016 1 is not even present is... Uh, uh, you know is an implicit missing if we want to make it explicit we can use this function complete and complete will take care of that so if you did that what's going 2015 4 this was already there 2016 1 was not there but because we said to complete it this one has now appeared so the system inserted this combination 2016 1 and because there is no return for it it just put an NA okay so if you want all the comp possible combinations to be properly shown up with missing values if there were any then we can use the complete function to achieve that. So this was the row that was actually added by the complete function. So again the way it works is it builds all unique combinations of year and quarter and completes by filling in NAs for the missing combinations. Okay. So uh, sometimes while doing data entry it's convenient to intentionally leave out some values. So for example you might of course, in programming, you're not going to create it like this. But if you're entering data on a screen, then you might be entering, for example, data for uh, one person, multiple types of data. So, for example, Derek Whitmore is a person for whom we have achieved, uh, we have uh, performed several treatments. And for each treatment, there is a response. So, for this person, we had performed three treatments. So, we say Derek Whitmore, treatment 1, response 7, treatment 2, response 10 treatment 3 response 9 right so in these remaining things you know think of it as entering data on a screen so on the screen we might just have a convention that uh, for the same person just leave the name blank and go ahead right? that saves obviously that saves time in data entry so that might how the uh, that might be how your data entry has uh, has been created so as a result what will happen is you will get a data frame with NAs for these things so you'll get direct mid more 1 7 then NA 210, NA 39. The idea is that this NA set should simply be filled in with Derek Whitmore. Okay, so you can easily do that by using the fill function. So you say treatment, which was the earlier table, and say fill person. If you do that, then the system is automatically going to fill in the missing values with the previous value. The previous non missing value for that particular column is going to be used to fill this up. So just another convenience. So what we have actually done here is to look at many different ways in which we can wrangle the data to bring it to a form in which it is easy for us to do further processing. Now, uh, it, these might appear to be mundane sorts of activities, uh, but in reality, these take up a significant amount of time. And unless your data is in the correct form to be analyzed, you won't be able to perform any meaningful analysis on it. And as I've already indicated to you, most of the time in organizations, before you can do any meaningful analysis, exploring the data, creating a good kind of uh, charts, which are uh, which reveal underlying patterns, that is actually far more important than actual analysis that you might perform by, by way of building models and so on. Okay, this is actually the harder part of it, which comes up front. And in fact, as a junior person in the organization who is performing uh, data analysis, uh, these are the kinds of things that they will expect you to do. You will probably not get an opportunity to, let's say, run a linear regression or something, or even not, even then, uh, your job will be to get the data into shape before somebody else can do that other job or you yourself can do it. So all of these things, although sounding mundane, are very important things 
and uh, these are the things that will enable you to get things done in an organization right these are the kinds of things you will be expected to do uh, up front okay so that's why i'm spending some time making sure that you have the basic skills to to do something as soon as you get into the organization 